An experiment. Nothing more. Nothing more. More human than human is our motto. Blade Runner, 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition. Blade Runner. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Blade Runner. I do appreciate it. Before we get started, go ahead and click the subscribe button, click the bell so you can be notified, and go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, with the film Blade Runner on my life, I've heard fans from across the land, all over the place. They're always raving on how good Blade Runner is, just how great of a classic it is, how great Harrison Ford is in the movie, just how timeless it is. It's just a great film. And I never did see it. So, you know, of course, a few months ago, they had the trailer uh, for Blade Runner 2049 come out or whatever, being directed by Denis Villeneuve. And when I first saw the trailer, it looked pretty good, but I was not impressed for the most part. Um, I thought it was a little hyped up. But then we got the release for the new um, uh, Blade Runner 2049 and everybody's raving about it. Just saying how great it is, you know, that it's the perfect sequel. And that really did get me excited. So I'm going to try to see it, you know, early this week before it comes out. But I wanted to go ahead and see Blade Runner, the first one, you know, so I can go into um, Blade Runner 2049, you know, with a good idea of what's going on, what the rules of the universe are, etc. And uh, Blade Runner is directed by Ridley Scott. Of course, you know who that guy is. You know, he did Hannibal. He did Robin Hood. He did Prometheus. He did Aliens. He did uh, Gladiator. He did G.I. Jane. He did... Um, uh, Martian, you know, he, he's done, he did uh, Gods and Ex Exodus, Gods and Crap, you know, screw that movie. He's done a lot of things, and he did one of his first movies. This movie came out in 1982. He did Blade Runner. It stars Harrison Ford, of course. And, um, you know, I went into this, I didn't even want to see a trailer or anything. I just read a synopsis, and that says that a number of cyborgs that you know, we're on a distant planet, still a spaceship, and then they're coming back to Earth and they're trying to meet their creator. They're trying to meet their maker. And that um, Harrison Ford, a Blade Runner, is trying to uh, stop them, you know, from infiltrating the base and killing the, you know, their creator, their maker, or just wrecking havoc on Earth. And uh, for the most part, you know, I really did enjoy the film. Um, I had, you know, no expectations. You know, I really can see that it, when this came out in 1982, that it possibly could have been considered before its time. And, you know, I can really understand why a lot of fans, you know, love this movie a lot. I mean, there were a lot of great things. The one thing that I did like about uh, about the film the most uh, was the score. Um, as soon as the movie started, you know, there was a big wide shot of this cityscape and there's, you know, flames flying up in the air. And then you have that down, down, down. And of course, this is my first time seeing it. And then I'm remembering that that's the same uh, piece of uh, song that was in the Blade Runner 2049 trailer. So in instantly, I'm already kind of hooked in, you know, and I kind of feel like I'm part of the family, you know, with people that watch the Blade Runner uh, movie way, way back in the day or whatever. Uh, but anyway, I really do like the soundtrack, not just that song in the beginning, but, you know, th the songs throughout or whatever. It really did help set the tone as far, you know, as with the universe and the atmosphere, because, you know, it's kind of funny. This film came out in 1982, but it's taking place in November of 2019. And of course, in this movie, they have flying cars and it's supposed to be some type of futuristic setting. Of course, we don't we're not there yet. It's 2017 now. We don't have flying cars. And if we're going to have flying cars in two in two years, um, someone needs to tell me what I need to invest my money, like every penny of it. But I mean, even though I'm watching it now in 2017 and it's supposed to be 2019 and they're having all these types of technology that, you know, we don't have like uh, flying cars, there still was a sense of, you know, futuristic tech. Even though the equipment was dated, I still felt the atmosphere that this was a futuristic movie. And for this to come out 35 years ago and still hold up like that, you know, that's pretty good. So good job there, really, Scott, 35 years later. Um, as far as as far as spoilers are concerned, if I let any slip out, uh, my bad, excuse me. I'm not doing that on purpose. But then again, this movie is 35 uh, years old. And, um, you know, so there. 
Um, but another something that I just wasn't a fan of for the most part in the, at the beginning, and they didn't do this through the whole movie, but the narration by Harrison Ford. You know, I, I just, I don't know, for some reason, it, I just, it kind of clocked, just kind of like, whoa, I, I'm watching a piece of film here or something like that. It kind of just sucked me out the world. I don't know if it's because of the sound mixing or whatever, but it just didn't flow with the rest of the commentary and the dialogue. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It just didn't tie itself together in the end. I mean, he narrated a lot in the beginning of the movie and towards the end of the movie, it pretty much... Um, in the middle, he didn't, but the narration just kind of felt off-putting to me, you know, so um, I just wasn't a fan of that. Um, as far as um, the performances, you know, they were pretty good, especially with uh, Harrison Ford and this one android uh, called Replicants. They're called Replicants um, by the name of Rachel. I don't, I didn't look up her real name. You know, there was kind of a little, uh, I don't want to, well, there's kind of like a little relationship there in between them. Uh, it was a little weird for me because she was a replicant, you know, but at the same time, you know, I was reading some of the FAQs in uh, IMDB before I hit record. And, you know, they were a lot, there's a lot of speculation about how, you know, the morality of what uh, Harrison Ford is doing as a Blade Runner, that he is becoming a replicant and then the replicants are becoming more human. And I kind of sensed a little element of that, um, but I could just be saying that because I read that you know, right before I hit record, but, you know, in this movie, the replicants are like, like the version six or whatever. So, you know, they are more advanced than, you know, the predecessors and they have a lot of human emotion. And there was one scene in particular between, um, Harrison Ford, uh, what is this? I forgot his name, a uh, Deckard, uh, and Rachel, one of the androids, one of the replicants. And there, there was a great sense of emotion there. And, you know, I was convinced but I was still like a little weird because I was like, oh, but this isn't a weird person. But, you know, you know, for I mean, I was convinced, you know, it, it still felt like there was some chemistry there in between the characters, um, you know, and I, I enjoyed it. All the of the replicants, you know, they were very strong, but um, I did kind of get a little bored in the beginning of the, you know, like the first 50 minutes. 51 minutes to to be exact and i know that because i had to press pause and go to the restroom um but anyway um you know I, I, around that time i was just like okay you know like harrison ford he's an action guy or you know he can't play the you know an action role this is a futuristic movie you got these androids that are super strong i'm expecting it's gonna have a lot of action and it really wasn't a lot of action you know maybe because this came in 1982 and they didn't have all the resources and I'm imagining that a lot of the um, shots uh, and the money production budget went to um, that little temple that they had that looked like the Jedi Order or something out of Star Wars, showing all the um, flying um, cars and whatnot. And they had some uh, flying cop cars, too, that was on wire or whatever. But I, I was like bored for a little bit, you know, but then all of a sudden he was in there fighting one replicant. And then like a elbow and a judo chop came out of nowhere or whatever and you know that's kind of where things picked up but um still it just was not a lot of action um and i was kind of expecting that at the very beginning of the movie and when i read the synopsis of the, of the film but towards the end there was a good sense of action some of it didn't make sense like the plot in the action didn't make sense like one of the replicants was you know she had this dude in like a sonya blade from mortal kombat scissor lock was on his head just a blow just knocking him out like this and when she knocks uh i'm gonna say bruce willis harrison ford out she decides to run over here and do some cartwheels no you should have just kicked his head in and then later on like the super duper replicant or whatever he um was crazy and it was kind of scary he was kind of like a terminator with personality or whatever because t1000 you know wasn't smiling or nothing but you know he was you know he was a little terrifying um the ending was a little anticlimactic to me and i kind of wanted a little bit more um but you know overall guys the, you know it was this is a great movie i did enjoy it but i did not love it um to be honest i do think it is a little overhyped i'm not saying that the movie is bad but you know uh, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, I love Blade Runner. And there's nothing wrong with that. And maybe I would feel the exact same way if I saw this decades ago, like, you know, majority of uh, fans of Blade Runner. Um, but, you know, it just didn't blow uh, my socks off. You know, I enjoyed the movie for the most part. Uh, sometimes my attention was slipping here and there. 
Um, but it was still a good film, and I still am looking forward to Blade Runner 2049 that comes out this Friday. If I had to rate Blade Runner out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Yes, a 7 out of 10. But guys, you know, that's just my opinion of Blade Runner. Have you seen it? I'm sure you have. It's 35 years old. But what did you think? You know, did you like it? Did you hate it? You know, uh, does this movie, get, you know, I mean, are you excited for Blade Runner 2049? You know, are you not? Did you hate this movie? What did you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. But come on my subscribers, get all the content that I have to provide. You can click the bell also so you can be notified when I do make uploads. And um, yeah, you know, help me uh, reach my first milestone of... Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that, uh, but, you know, just go ahead and help me subscribe. You can also go to my website, check me out there, bookmark, and also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's all that good stuff, guys. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I also provided a link down in the description box below. So, guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my review slash opinion of Blade Runner that came out in 1982, starring Harrison Ford, directed by Ridley Scott. And before you go, guys, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.